Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lumnosity Ecosystem in Action video series. Today, we're going to present the Desmos partnership. My name is Gonzalo Zavatsky. I'm the Partner Success Manager at Lumnosity, and I'm here today with Megan McGuire, Director of Partnership at Desmos. Hi, everyone. Hey, Megan. And Suzanne von Oy, Interaction Developer at Desmos. Hi, great to be here. Hey, Suzanne. So we're going to start with a quick overview of the Lernosity Partner ecosystem, and then we'll be focusing on Lernosity and Desmos partnership. We will start with a brief history and then move into some use cases and demos to conclude with a Q&A. So at Lernosity, we found our niche and we went an inch wide and a mile deep, specializing in tools that our companies use to create world-class learning products. We recognize that there are many capabilities our customer need to go to market and Lernosity will never provide them with all. So this created an opportunity for us to join solution provider with our customers. These strategic partnerships enable us to be the plug and play ecosystem for the educational technology industry. We strive to fill the gap where customers have a need that we don't provide out of the box. So if we don't have it, one of our partners will. We partner with item bank leaders that provide high quality content through Lernosity item banks. We partner with technical feature that extend our product value proposition. We have custom, customization and integration partners that help our clients integrate our products into solutions and custom content creators who have authoring experts to build content through Lernosity. So this is the Lernosity partner ecosystem but today we're here to talk about Desmos. So Megan, you can explain this further. Fantastic. Thanks, thanks Gonzalo. Really excited to talk about this partnership, which we've had now for a few years. Um, we were really excited to work with you all because you've established yourself as a leading player in math assessment development, and you have great content authoring, powerful math scoring, and you have in-depth analytics, which help content development and the content delivery. So we were excited because of all your capabilities. And we also think that we've built world-class tools that help every student learn math and love learning math. Um, and ideally we wanted that power of Desmos embedded in the Learnosity experience. So we think together we can bring the power of Desmos tools directly to all your great clients at Learnosity. So what does this mean for our, um, our partnership reach? So we do have a lot of common clients, which include publishers, assessment companies, and other types of content development uh, entities. We have, as of the last year, um, we've authored over 30,000 Desmos items in Learnosity through our shared clients, and over 100,000 questions have been answered by students in Learnosity acti activities in the last 12 months, which is fantastic. Um, if folks are, who are listening are curious, how does our relationship work, Lernosity and Desmos? We're in regular touch. I talk to Gonzalo all the time, and we work together to support our common clients and also work together to recruit new customers who may benefit from this partnership. And we also work together on a variety of support requests that may come in, whether technical in nature or content in nature. Um, our engineers have worked together to build the custom APIs for the Desmos features and the Desmos question, custom question types, which my colleague Suzanne will go into in just a moment. Um, and we've integrated uh, through into the Learnosity product to create content using Desmos as part of the Learnosity authoring tools. And so with that, I'll turn it back to you, Gonzalo, to walk through um, what our demos are gonna look like today. Thanks, Megan. Yeah, I just wanted to, to highlight that about the, the deep integration that, that we did, you know, the, the, the way that the, both products are integrated. They, they work in a way that, you know, it's difficult for, for, for the end user to recognize uh, what's, learn, what's Lernosity and what's Desmos uh, from a user experience. So this is something that we're going to see in, in these uh, use cases that Susanne is going to present. So we're going to start with an authoring experience uh, where Susanne is going to present how how can you build Desmos questions in the Lernosity uh, author site? And then we're also going to cover the learning experience to show you an activity with Desmos and Lernosity questions. And the last part would be some reports that you get out of the box uh, using the Lernosity reports API. So now, Susan, 
you can take it from here with, from, with the presentation. Great, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna probably take over the screen share here. Okay. Uh, so here's a question in Learnocity. Uh, it's already built uh, and it asks students to solve an equation uh, by using a graphing calculator. Uh, and one of the things that we can do is we can actually add in a graphing calculator that students can access right here on the question itself. So I'm gonna click this plus sign right here and I'm gonna add a feature. Now you'll notice in these features that there are a lot of things we could add and there are three features that are specific to Desmos. Um, we've got the four function calculator, the Desmos scientific calculator, and in this case, we're going to want to use the graphing calculator. Uh, so I'll, I'll add this. I can specify some things like its width and its height. I can preview that. Uh, we have some defaults there. So in, in an actual question, I'd press this to get the graphing calculator and this is what it would look like. Um, I can also configure it to match what the state's uh, setup is. So different states have different requirements for how the calculator needs to look, uh, what cert certain functions might need to be disabled for certain states. So I can pick whatever state it is that I uh, might be interested in having the calculator match. Um, so I'm gonna pick Massachusetts because I'm here from New England. Uh, and I'm gonna click, uh, save. And now on this question that originally didn't have a graphing calculator, now I can see that it actually has both the question and the graphing calculator and they look like one thing. Um, and when a student looks at this, they're going to see the question and have the ability to pop up a graphing calculator to use right there. And in fact, how about I, uh, you know what, I was going to solve this here in preview mode, but I think we have this on a little uh, we're going to look at this from the student side a little bit later. So I won't do that right now. Um, but what I will do is uh, go back to my item list and demo what it looks like to actually create a question where students aren't inputting their answers in the form of a um, text box, but they're inputting answers actually in a graph. And this is another way that Desmos um, and Learnocity partner together. So if I add an item type, um, a brand new item type. We've got a bunch of sort of pre-built question types here for different levels of math. I'm going to stick with algebra one, but know that there are, is also the possibility of building um, a completely unique question type depending on what you're doing. But I'll start with a slope intercept question. Um, maybe I want to ask a student um, graph a line with a slope of negative two. Uh, in that case, I'm going to draw an example answer. And what I want the student to match is not the slope and the intercept. I might only care about the slope. And when I preview this, um, it shows up as it was at first. It doesn't show up as the, the answer I've given. But notice, no matter where I put this line, no matter what the y-intercept is, it's marking me as correct because I have the slope that the, the question asked for. So it's matching the slope of the answer I gave here. Um, I'm going to make a different question that asks students to graph a specific line. Graph the line. And we can use this to have a really nicely formatted equation here. y equals 2 thirds x plus 1. And I'll hit OK here. So now I've got my question and I will make sure that my answer is what I want for the students to have. So notice that they should have this line. They, they don't actually have to have the points in this exact location as long as their line is the line y equals uh, 2 thirds x plus 1. And we'll watch that, want them to match the slope and the y-intercept here. Um, so that's what it looks like from the authoring side. And we can preview. But like I said, I, you know, I, I'm going to actually look at the student side of the experience in just a second. So 2 thirds x plus 1, I could graph it here. Um, I could be over here. I might not even have one of my points at the y-intercept as long as the line goes through the same spot and it's going to mark me right. So I'll hit save here. And then I am going to actually move over to see what the student side of this experience looks like. So I'm ready. I'm going to start my activity. 
Okay. So here's a Learnacity question. Um, let G of X be a transformation, F of X shifted up four units, reflected across the Y axis. Um, so in here, I'm gonna be writing, uh, let's see here, F of X, we wanna shift it up four units, so plus four, and we want to shift it across the Y axis. So I think, uh, reflected across the Y axis. But down here, we have the ability to do a very similar question just using uh, the graphical representation. So we're, we're not asking students for the equation of it. We're asking students to look at this. We've got the graph of the parent function. And now we want to graph uh, the, the solution here where we've shifted left two and down three. So I'm going to go ahead and shift left two and down three. No reflection. So, so now, um, and just to, to point out that this graph, I think, goes through there. Let's see if I can make the exact same curve, but using a different point. And Desmos and Learnosity together should be able to still mark that question right. Um, here, another one. This is the one that we just looked at, that we created and added a graphing calculator to. Let me use the graphing calculator to solve this problem. Uh, I'll say y equals absolute value of x plus 2. So we'll solve this equation by setting each side of the equation um, equal to y. The graph of the other side, y equals square root of x plus 3. And now um, I can see here there are two intersection positions right here. We've got this one. So the x value will be one of the solutions, negative 2.618. And the other solution it looks like would be negative 0.382. All right, um, let's go to the next item. Here's that line, graph the line y equals 2 thirds x plus 1. And just to be fun, I think I'll do a version that we haven't yet done, which kind of looks like this, okay? So the points are in a totally new location and it should mark us correct as well. Um, and I think I'm going to click finished and pass it over to Gonzalo to show uh, what this is going to look like now from the teacher side after a student has submitted an activity. Excellent. Thank you, Susan. Yeah. You're quite welcome. As you can see here, we're loading just uh, some of the reports that you can get out of the box from Learnosity using the Learnosity Reports API. And well, the first one is just a session summary. You will see there the number of items that were correct or incorrect. And then you get the score by item by user, you know, on each item and the overall score. And the one is pretty interesting to see here now is the session detail by question, where you can see for each question the student responds and also uh, what is the correct answer, uh, what is the score for that particular question. And what is pretty interesting here, where you're looking at a review of Desmos questions mixed with Learnosity questions, and, and, and it's almost impossible to differentiate them. You know, they're all part of the same experience. Sure. Um, oh, and look at that. This is a classic case of not reading quite closely enough, reflecting over the y-axis versus reflecting over the x-axis versus what I did. That's great. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Excellent. So yeah, this is really, really, really helpful. Okay, great, thanks. We're gonna do a short Q&A now to finish with this. Fantastic. Gonzalo, how easy is it to enable these Desmos features in my Learnosity instance? It's pretty simple. All the integration is it's done. So basically it's just, it's like turning a switch for us, uh, turn it on and all the integration is done and we can activate uh, all those questions and features that are coming from Desmos to the Learnosity instance for any of our customers. So it's pretty, pretty quick. Great. And, and I have a question for you, Megan. And do, do you provide any training for companies who would like to know how to use Desmos uh, in Learnosity? We do, yes. We do trainings with companies who are new to this partnership. Um, and we tend to also record the training so those companies can distribute 
the learnings shared during those trainings with other colleagues. So it's something we love to do. We want to make sure people feel set up for success when they're using the features and the questions. Excellent. And, last, and lastly, Gonzalo, um, if I was interested in learning about these features for my own, own company, who should I contact? Well, perfect. If you're already a Lenosity customer, it's very simple. You can just log a ticket in the Lenosity Support Portal. It's help.lenosity.com. And if you're not a customer, you can always email marketing at lenosity.com and we will reply as well. So yeah, I think that concludes our general overview of the Lenosity and Desmos partnership. Um, thanks for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next Ecosystem in Action video. Thanks, Anil. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Gonzalo. Thanks so Thank much. You.